at my mother and father's farm, and uh, he claimed to be uh, a private investigator hired by Monsanto. And uh, he was uh, out investigating uh, farmers saving their own seed uh, and uh, asked us, uh, he'd come right out and ask us if we'd saved their seed. And uh, we told him, no, we had not. And um, offered up our herbicide purchases and seed purchases, uh, all the receipts and everything. Um, told him where everything was purchased so he could go check it out for himself. Um, he, uh, he declined that, uh, that offer. And um, what occurred is then they, they sued us. Monsanto filed a lawsuit against myself, uh, my father, and my two brothers. And uh, Monsanto presented us with uh, documents that they claimed were uh, samples taken from our farms. To obtain those samples, Monsanto had to have trespassed upon our land without our permission and stole those samples. That year, I recall we had uh, 492 acres of Roundup Ready soybeans. Um, and they were, they were growing under contract for a company for seed. Um, and the contract was very specific. It spelled out the specific fields. So it wasn't a problem in isolating those fields. Um, everybody knew it. And why did you settle out of court with, with Monsanto? Well, after two and a half years of this, uh, the family was just, just destroyed. Um, uh, the stress involved in this, I mean, they're in essence threatening five generations of work. And um, if they were to prevail in something like this, it's all gone. They take it all away. They take it all away. <clears throat> Good morning. Morning, sir. How, How are you this morning, Troy? I'm well. How are you, David? Still surviving? Good. <laughs> Troy Roush and David Runyon grow conventional soybeans. They have been victims of the so-called gene police. Created by Monsanto to enforce its law in the fields, the gene police so fear in rural America, where farmers denounce the totalitarian methods used in a GMO-dominated world. I have some pictures here for you, Troy, I'd like for you to look at. Okay. Here's what I have done, Troy, to uh, help prevent re-entry on my farm. Anyone coming on my farm? <laughs> Summer, it was in July of 2003, and they came, it was the latter part of July, they came to my house, it was uh, like 7 p.m. Who came? Uh, Monsanto employees. And they presented me a uh, business card. And uh, they asked me a few questions about the kind of soybeans I plant, the kind of corn I plant, uh, where I market my crops, and so I said, okay, that's the end of the conversation. Yeah, patents have changed. They've changed everything. It revolves with a, with, with a relationship of trust with neighbors. That is gone. Uh, by myself, I probably only have two farmers that I talk to that are close to me. Are they really afraid, the farmers? Of course they're afraid. You can't defend yourself against these people. They've created a little industry that, that serves no other purpose than to wreck farmers' lives. Um, of course they're afraid. Does that mean that you're afraid, for instance, that the neighbor can snitch on you? Yes. Yes? Yes. yes. All you have to do is, is dial 1-800. Dial 1-800-Monsanto. Or no, I'm sorry, 1-800-Roundup. I remember encouraging farmers to uh, call this, this toll-free number and turn their neighbor in. And why does Monsanto do that? Well, the reason they do it is control. Seeds? Yeah. They want to control the seed. They want to own life. I mean, this is the building blocks of food we're talking about. They, they are in the process of owning food. All food. Between 1995 and 2005, Monsanto acquired over 50 seed companies throughout the world. These companies produce corn, cotton, wheat, and soybean, and also seeds for tomatoes, potatoes, and sorghum. Everywhere, people worry about Monsanto's monopoly, which in the long term threatens to wipe out all non-transgenic varieties. Monsanto doesn't agree and speaks only about the benefits of biotechnology, especially in developing countries like India. Our products provide significant economic benefits to both large and small growers. In many cases, farmers are able to grow higher quality and better yielding crops.
India is the world's third largest cotton producer. In 1999, Monsanto acquired Mahico, the country's leading seed company. Two years later, the Indian government authorized the sale of BT cotton under the brand name Balgard. It is genetically modified to produce an insecticide which repels ballworms, a cotton parasite. <laughs> Since 2001, Kiran Sakari and Abdul Gayam have been closely following the transgenic cotton grown by small farmers in the Warangal district. Every year, the two agronomists publish a report comparing bioengineered cotton with conventional cotton in terms of yields and production costs. In 2006, the harvest was ravaged by a disease that affects transgenic cotton. This is a Bolgard uh, field. Uh, and we can see some of the rhizoctonia affected plants. You see, if you remove the bark of a healthy plant, it, will, it won't be like this, like threads. See, it's a classic example of rhizoctonia infestation. The farmers, they have said they have never seen that. And uh, when we were doing our study from 2001, we have noted this disease on very few samples in the BT cotton only. And as the time passed, the spread was seen more and more in the BT fields as well as some non-BT fields also. But I personally feel that there might be some interaction, undesirable interaction between the host plant where the gene was introduced and the gene which is carrying the BT. Mm. and that has introduced the weakness in the plant to not to resist this rhizoctonia. I have seen the website of the uh, Michael Monsanto. BT cotton reduces 78% of the pesticide reduction, um, in pesticide consumption, and it gives to 30% better yields. But it's, uh, it's an utter flop. After 70, 90 days, you invariably you have to spray for uh, a bowl of even on the BT cotton. How do you think that so many farmers are buying BT seeds? See, the, presently the option is very, very na is getting narrower and narrower to the farmer. During the current season, it even farmer wanted to go for non-BT. There was no non-BT hybrid seed available in the market. Today in India, Monsanto controls nearly all of the cotton seed market forcing the locals to buy its seeds at prices four times higher than conventional varieties. Small farmers must turn to moneylenders who charge high interest rates. If the harvest is poor, it means bankruptcy, a vicious circle which is decimating Indian villages. Tragedies like the one we've just witnessed occur three times a day in the Vidharba region where BT cotton was introduced in 2005. Of course, cotton farmers committing suicide is not new in India, but the GM crops are causing it to skyrocket. However, in this battle that pits David against Goliath, few dare to publicly denounce this international scandal. This is Vidarbha's rice growing belt. If you see the minimum suicides are there. But this is the cotton growing area. The result of the BT cotton is the first year 600 suicides from June 2005 to 2006. Second year still today within six months 680 suicides. So, 
It's a disaster. It's a complete disaster.